Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 4, verse 12, Genesis chapter 5, verse 17, and Exodus chapter 7, verse 9. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for your word, Lord Jesus. Thank you for blessing us with a new day. Thank you for helping us to triumph over the enemy. Lord Jesus, help us to stay in your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Luke chapter four, verse 12. And Jesus answered him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. All right, and so here, this is Jesus. He is um, in the wilderness being tempted, um, well, tested um, with the enemy. And um, he is already very vulnerable. He's, he's under a lot of pressure. He hasn't eaten. He hasn't drank. He is in a real state, right? Uh, a really really vulnerable state and he is being tempted um he's being tempted with the three main temptations of man the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and here this um is the temptation of the pride of life it says and jesus answered him it is said you shall not put the lord your God to the test. He was answering Satan when he took him to the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem and he told him to throw himself down. And so um, if he was, you know, the son of God, he, he his, his words were, if you are the son of God, um, then throw yourself down. Those angels are going to, you know, keep you in all your ways. They're going to, they're not going to let you stumble. They're not going to let you fall. Right. And so, and Christ knew that 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 was true, but that would not have been the will of the father. And so he, his response to him was the word of God, right? Because Satan came to him with a, a twisted version of the word of God. And um, he replied back with the word of God, which is the way we should deal with the enemy. And so he said, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And he was, of course, quoting the Ten Commandments. Okay, and so why wouldn't Jesus do just do it right if he's God then why wouldn't he just throw himself down well he submitted himself to become a man and submitted himself to the will of the father and so you know just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do it right just because we have something within our power does not mean that we should exercise that power actually restraint shows more display of power than actual application of that power right so we need to make sure that we are are just because something is within our own ability it does not mean that we should press god and and try to get him to move or do something that he did not um want to be in his will right um if you desired something right and you just wanted it and you just wanted it and and this is just the way it is this is just the way i like my life this is just the way i want it but god has shown you yes you do have grace his grace is sufficient but that does not mean that you should press god into a corner and 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 say what the will is today right? God wants us to make sure that we are not grieving Holy Spirit and that we are not trying to put God to the test and, and see whether or not he is going to respond on our behalf, right? God wants us to follow his will and his instruction. Otherwise, you're not submitting yourself to lordship. You're, you're just doing your own will. You're going the way of Cain, um, you know, we we make choices in daily life. And, you know, that's actually what we were talking about yesterday about that dream is that, you know, the unwise bride chooses tribulation in her choices, right? Her choices, you know, are 
the decision to undergo that tribulation. We need to make sure that we are not operating in our flesh because our flesh leads to death right? Leads to destruction, leads to chaos. We want to make sure that we are being led by the spirit of God. Amen. All right. Let's look at Genesis chapter five, verse 17. Thus all the days of Mahalael were 895 years and he died. And then this is, um, remember we we when we get this it is a reflection of the death of Christ right so Christ submitted himself to the will of the father and even his own death that is that is usurping anything that he desired right remember he even prayed that the cup would pass for him from him but then in the end he said not my will but your will be done right that's the way that we need to operate in our daily life yes i do not want things to happen this way i prefer something else i prefer to drive that car i prefer to work over here i prefer to live this type of a lifestyle but guess what? Not my will, but your will be done. That's the attitude that we need to have. Remember, Mahalael, the the um, interpretation of the name is the shining one of El, right? So that's why he is a reflection of the Christ. It's, it's The name itself is a, a reflection of Christ, the shining one of El. And so, but remember the Christ, though he was infinite, he came into from this immortal you know, state and put himself into mortality. He submitted himself to the will of the father and he submitted himself to human flesh, right? And so he had to live out this life in flesh. Thus all the days of Mehelael were 895. 895 means inanimate in the Strong's concordance or, or um, um, lifeless, right? Meaning that he died. And that's the next word. And he died, right? So 895 means death, lifeless, inanimate. Um, and it also in the um, Hebrew, it means Babylon, right? Or Babel. So to submit yourself to man and this world, and and even though you're you're infinite, you're holy, you're a real God, you are truly God, Right. And yet you submit yourself to the will of the father and, and subject yourself to these to being killed, murdered by men that you created. Right. That's some real submission. Right. We if Christ could could, could be so perfect as to not put God to the test as it relates to his will then we can submit ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, um, presenting our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We can daily lay our life down, right? We can daily say, you know what, God, not my will, but your will. Amen. All right, let's look at this third verse exodus chapter 7 verse 9 when pharaoh says to you prove yourselves by working a miracle then you shall say to aaron take your staff and cast it down before pharaoh that it may become a serpent all right and so of course this is moses talking to god and god is giving him his ammunition to deal with um pharaoh right his his all of his clapbacks, right? <laughs> so when Pharaoh says this, you do that, right? Not not Moses's will, not Moses's response, right? Because Moses's response probably would have just been to shudder and run away. Because remember, he he had a real problem speaking in front of other people. Um, that's why he had to use Aaron, right? But here it wasn't his will, but it was God's will. So God can work miracles, right? And he wants to work miracles through us, but in his will, right? Not in our own will. 
you know, imagine, you know, Elijah's the prophet speaking a, a prophetic word and just saying things and all these horrible things happening because God allowed it, right? Uh, imagine Jesus getting off the cross and, and walking away just because he chose not to suffer anymore, right? We would all be lost. Chaos would ensue. Right. But God chose to submit himself to the will of the father. Christ decided to say, not my will, but your will be done. Moses decided, yeah, I can't speak in front of other people and I don't want to look like look bad. And I don't want the people to look at me crazy. But he said, not my will, but your will. Right. In his actions. And that's the way we need to live life. Not our will but God's will be done. If Christ could die on a cross, suffer, bleed, die, and, and go through all of that rather than usurping his power and, and, and just causing chaos to ensue in the world and, and saying, I'm not going to die like this, right? When it was completely in his power, right? But it was not the will of the father, do the will of the Father. It's always what's best. It, it's always the answer. It's always the response in our lives. It's the response to the things that we want, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We need to put Satan in his place and do the will of the Father. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, that we will not live lives that put you to the test. Help us to walk that out daily, Lord Jesus. Help us not to live in our flesh because our flesh is decaying and it's dying. Help us to submit ourselves to your will in the same way that Jesus submitted himself to your will on the cross. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. Lord God, work miracles through us, not our will, but your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.